Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. So this is going to be um, a review of an incident, or not a full review, but um, kind of a light review of an incident that has occurred in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, so this was fresh. Um, the weekend of um, May 12, 13. Um, so this was um, Mother's Day weekend basically uh another you know shooting in a bar nightclub and happens a lot uh bars and nightclubs are some of the most dangerous places that you can go to uh when you take environments that um <clears throat> serve alcohol and people come to those environments having already consumed alcohol having already consumed other intoxicants um, coupled with um, the clientele themselves whether or not they can self-regulate uh, their temperaments um, if they're the type who are going to be prone to violence anyway um, those factors plus um, the bar itself and how the bar owner or manager and the security tolerate certain things or condone certain things. So you can have a bar where uh, I have no idea what this bar does. I don't know anything about the owners. I don't know anything about the managers. I don't know anything about security. Um, so I'm not, what I'm about to say does not it may not pertain to these people um, but you may have bars out there where the owner and their managers are kind of shady and they allow an atmosphere to breed where people are kind of allowed to do whatever they want to do they over serve um, they allow illegal things to go on and you may have places where they have security who also play along they condone this because they're being told by the manager hey it's cool uh, we can do this the physical layout of the establishment itself it's the property that it's on is it is the property on a downtown street where there's a sidewalk to the front of the building and there's no parking lot for that property or is it on its own property does it have its own parking lot is it surrounded by other bar businesses is it on a road where it's the only bar on the road but there's other businesses there that have parking lots that people park in the neighborhood that it's in is it in a lower class middle class higher class neighborhood uh, police response times police presence <laughs> um, a lot of those factors uh, have a play in these venues when deadly things happen when these shootings happen you can have a bar that has some pretty dangerous people coming to it and it can be a really safe bar but it has to be the manager of the bar or owner of the bar and the security team working together to strive for the best safety and security overall and, and by doing that you are being accountable you're following the rules you're following the law and you're doing your due, dil due diligence to make things safe there I had a contract um, a few years back it was at a a place called Pharaoh's Hookah Lounge and you know 
when you say hookah lounge, I think it's literally just a place where people go to smoke hookah, right? And it was. Like, people went there to go smoke hookah. It was also a restaurant. They served food. Um, but on weekend nights, it was a nightclub, essentially. Um, it was a nightclub that catered to the rap, hip-hop, music, and the crowd that follows that music. And it was, at that time, it was the only bar in town that played exclusively all rap and hip-hop music and catered to the crowd that predominantly listens to that music. So out of that crowd, there were some dangerous people. People who, since that place has closed down, um, people who have, have gone on to commit murders, people who have become murder victims, <laughs> um, people who have committed violent crimes, uh, gone on, you know, I'm, I'm sure they were doing this stuff while they was there, but, you know, later on got caught for the stuff. Um, drug trafficking, like serious drug trafficking. So, so, and it wasn't like every single person that came in there was like that, but a lot, um, a lot of people that did come in there, like they were, they were some dangerous people. Um, but the way the manager, he wanted accountability. He did not want any problems. Um, the owner specifically he did not want any problems, um, cause he didn't want to lose his liquor license. And, um, you know, selfishly, right? Um, I did a kick-ass job. <laughs> Sounds a little self-conceited, but uh, no, it's true. Uh, and it wasn't just me; it was also the crew that I had out there. Um, they were motivated. Uh, they were um, very proactive. They were not just reactive; they were proactive. And I've talked about this before. Um, in articles and also in videos, um, but the the secret, the science to it, in my opinion, is controlling your door, controlling your parking lot. Now, as I said earlier, there are some places that um, they don't have a parking lot, right? It's just the downtown city street, bunch of buildings, and all you got is a sidewalk, maybe a back alley. Um, but controlling the parking lot. That is one of the key things. Because you don't want people sitting outside loitering. Like, you come to a bar, right? Why are you hanging outside? Go inside. This this is not Night of the Roxbury, right? Like, where they want to make a club where the outside is the inside, right? <laughs> no. You want to hang out in the parking lot, go to Walmart. That's where people hang out at. So you have to control the parking lot, make sure there's no loitering going on. And when people are loitering, they're drinking, they're smoking, they're snorting, they're shooting. And shooting could be shooting drugs, shooting dice, uh, or shooting guns, right? So take that away. Don't allow people to feel like they have the freedom to do whatever the hell they want to do in that parking lot. That parking lot is not theirs at all. The parking lot is just that, a parking lot. That's where you park your cars at, and then you go somewhere. You don't park your car there and hang out. So that's number one, controlling that parking lot. Controlling the door. And what I mean by controlling the door is for venues like this, um, pat downs are a must. If if your establishment plays predominantly rap and hip hop music, you have to do pat downs because the crowd that's coming, they are typically the ones who are carrying guns, and they are typically the ones who are violent people. Typically, the ones who have prior criminal histories. So that's a must. Everyone must be patted down. 
And so with that, you need a male and female working the door. Because you cannot have a guy do a very good pat down on a girl. And when I say pat downs, I mean pat downs. Like TSA airport quality pat down. The people should feel a little bit violated <laughs> after they've been patted down. The more complaints, the better. That's how you know you're doing a good pat down. Having people empty their pockets out of a bunch of bull crap. Because some people, man, they put all kinds of stuff in their pockets. It's like their pocket is a purse. And you can't feel very well what's in that pocket. So having them empty pockets out. TSA style pat down. Not allowing bags and crap to come in. Yeah, if it's a girl that's got a little purse, okay. Um, or if it's one of those little man purse, fanny pack looking things, eh, okay. But backpacks and stuff, nope. Like, that, that's just taking too long to search for that stuff. So really good pat downs. IDing people to make sure that they can come in there, right? Monitoring the crowd that's coming in for signs of over-intoxication. Are they too drunk to be there? If they're too damn drunk to be there, they don't need to be there. They need to go somewhere else. Are they acting aggressive? Do they have a really bad, disrespectful attitude? If they come to that front door and they automatically pop off with a disrespectful attitude to staff at the door, then that means they are very likely to carry that same attitude over to someone else inside who is a guest and is not an employee of the establishment who has some degree of authority over that establishment. Right? So a person who comes to the door disrespects the people who are working there who can, who by law can control who can come in and who can't. Willfully knowingly does that to them. There's nothing to stop them from acting the same way to a customer. So that's going to make customers feel unsafe. And then they're going to do that attitude with someone who, who, who they ain't the one to be doing that to, and then you're going to have a fight. <clears throat> and being um, very stern about it. Those two things right there allowed us at that hookah place to have one of the safest venues in town with arguably some of the most dangerous people in town frequenting it. <clears throat> while I was there, while my crew was there, we had zero acts of major violence. There was a couple of fist fights. But there was no shootings, there was no stabbings, nothing. When you look at, historically, in our town, uh, other places that have had uh, the same, I don't know what I'm saying, similar venue that predominantly plays rap, hip-hop music, and has that crowd that comes in, they have had major acts of violence. They have had shootings, they have had stabbings, they have people beat to death. Literally, beat to death by hands and feet. And it's because those places were managed differently. Those people, the owners of the bar, were engaged in that lifestyle. It was normal to them. And their security was also <laughs> of the clientele. They were just like them. And they lived that lifestyle. So naturally, when you have people who are engaged in stupid stuff controlling the place that is allowing some people who do stupid stuff to come in, there's going to be stupid stuff going on in those places. <clears throat> so if you're from Bowling Green, um, then you probably recognize names of places like Lava Lounge, Chocolate City. <laughs> um, those are places and those are ones I can remember off the top of my head. Those are places that got shut down. Because uh, they couldn't control their, their bars. Um, 
and it was predominantly because the owners and security were on the stupid path. Now, <clears throat> going back to the Pharaoh place, um, like I said, predominantly rap hip hop music and predominantly that crowd that follows that stuff in a very small building. Um, and probably this at that time when it was open, uh, the safest place there was, um, <clears throat> anyway, so, uh, bars and nightclubs can be dangerous, um, but they can be safe places. It, you have to have the bar owner, manager, and the security team, uh, striving to do good things. Now, um, when you have these businesses that are operating and they don't care, um, and bad things happen, well, what's the recourse? What is there to hold them accountable? Well, you've got your state alcohol beverage control entity who can revoke their license and yada, yada, yada. Um, but they may have a lot of red tape that they have to go through. It may take um, a longer period of time for them to ever be able to do anything. You also, on some properties um, or some venues, for example, going back to the downtown bar, kind of example because a downtown area may have multiple bars and people are fighting in the street or fighting in the sidewalks and shooting people on the sidewalks or shooting them on the street those bars can sort of get away with being held responsible because they can point to the other bars and say oh well they must have been in that bar over there well you can't tie this on us there's there's five there's five bars here how can you say that it was here? How do you? How can you say it's our problem? But they were on the city street. They were on the city sidewalk. They weren't on our property. They weren't inside our bar. They was on city property. It's not our fault. We're not. We're not liable. In reality, we all know that they're responsible, right? Like those people would not have been there if it weren't for you. But in some places, it is hard to prove that in the court. And so you have places that continue to operate and they're dangerous places and it's just a, a ticking time bomb before something major happens. So what Louisville has done that I really like, and I'm going to write a letter to our city commission recommending that our city uh, adopts something similar to this. Um, but what Louisville has done is they have enacted an ordinance that gives their police, or gives their city, the authority to suspend their liquor license. Now, this may not work in all states because their state laws may be, you know, different. But here in Kentucky, uh, you have your state ABC entity, um, and then by law, uh, the chief of police is um, for that local area supposed to be the the one heading up the ABC stuff in that city um <clears throat> so what louisville has done is they've tweaked their ordinances and and given and given themselves the authority to immediately immediately shut down these places that are causing problems and it's it's a pretty cool idea i like it um i'm sure it's probably going to be argued at some point in court um but i think it is a it's a good thing. It's it's a way to have some sharp teeth and be able to do something versus just sitting around and not be able to control anything. <clears throat> and it's, for one, you know, being able to immediately shut a place down, um, that in the, in the immediate aftermath is going to be good for safety and security of, of the people for the for the betterment of the the, the public good um, but eventually you know they're going to be able to reopen at some point right after a hearing uh, after a certain amount of time goes by uh, but it puts it in the back of those people's heads well we need to do something so this don't happen again we don't want to get shut down again when you shut a bar down for a weekend weekend night 
you lose a pretty good chunk of revenue because that's when a lot of business occurs is on weekends. And people are motivated by money. That's why we have a system in place. When you get a speeding ticket or any other citation for a crime, there is a monetary punishment attached to that. When you tell a person they have to break open their piggy bank and give you a, a substantial a little amount, that hurts people. Because they want that money. They need that money to go buy their things. And now they're having to relinquish it and, and give it to the court. That motivates people to not, not all people, but it motivates a lot of people to not do stupid stuff. So if you can immediately shut a bar down, let's say something happens on a Friday night, you immediately shut them down and you take out that weekend for them, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt their pocket. And then from that point on, they may start thinking about doing things right. Hiring legit security instead of just t-shirt bouncers who don't give a crap. They may start to alter some of the things that they themselves are doing such as harboring illegal things going on. So pretty good thing that uh, the city of Louisville is doing. Um, you can go to their website and uh, read this article for you. I'm not going to, um, to read it to you, but um, pretty much summarized everything that's, that's kind of in here anyway. Um, but yeah, um, it's a good idea, and I think it's a good thing for other cities to look at and adopt. Like I said, I'm going to write a letter to our city commission recommending that uh, this be adopted for our town. And that way we, our city can have some teeth um, on controlling some problem properties that seem to uh, float under the radar, so to speak, or float float from under criminal prosecution because they can point at other bars and be like, well, you know, they could have been over that bar or they was in the city street. It's not our problem. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's your problem because you attract shithead people who do shithead things. And it's going to be coming to an end. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you like what you hear and see, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you have not already, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching.